So let me begin by introducing Dr. Olivier Panaccio, who will show us how the mathematics of images, in, and particularly their color, influences the discomfort they evoke. Hello, thank you, Arnold, for uh, the inv invitation and uh, for organizing this meeting. Um, so some pictures that are uh, this modern painting here cause visual discomfort. And with all the negative uh, consequences we know, especially in hypersensitive individuals. So why? Why do some pictures cause visual discomfort? Can we develop algorithm to predict uh, <coughs> the discomfort from an image? Being able to predict the visual discomfort an image can cause is important to avoid, to avoid adverse effect in design and architecture. Modeling and predicting visual discomfort is also important to develop a general understanding of the mechanism underlying the condition. Currently, there is no general understanding of why some stimuli cause visual discomfort. However, we know that there is an association between visual discomfort, deviation from the visual fissure typically found in nature, and hypermetabolism. And that provides a direction for a general theory of visual discomfort. And this direction comes from the theory of efficient coding a theory that has received strong empirical support. The theory states that sensory systems have evolved to process efficiently natural stimuli, where efficiently here means with reduced metabolism and increased information content. The Industrial Revolution brought the modern artifact buildings and urban landscape that make our visual diet today. If we look at the evolutionary history of humans and apes during which our visual system was shaped, the industrial, the industrial revolution is an extremely recent event. Human history since the industrial revolution represents an insignificant stage in terms of sensory input. To visualize this, let's represent the modern environment proportionally to its duration during the last million year, a tiny part. This means that our visual system may not optimally process part of our modern visual diet and leads to the idea of using deviation from the regularities of natural scenes to predict discomfort. So one of the most consistent regularities of natural scenes is that the luminance contrast energy falls off with special frequency following a power law, a property often referred to as one over F. So this is illustrated here by this green family of regular one over f cons in logarithmic logarithmic coordinates. A lot of studies have shown that the visual system is more efficient at processing stimuli with a one over f amplitude spectrum. And we have shown that deviation of the luminance content of an image with respect to this family is an excellent predictor of visual discomfort. So to see that, we can compute the amplitude spectrum of uh, the luminance profile of an image and we can find the best fit amongst all these families of spectra of natural scenes. Once we have the best fit, we can compute the residuals, that's the difference, and sum all the residuals to give a single number. So it turns out that this single number is a very good predictor of the visual discomfort from luminance, explaining about 40% of the variance in judgment of discomfort. So, this metric, simple metric, however, is, not, is only based on luminance. So what about the large contra color contrast uh, in the original image? Does it contribute to discomfort? So we know that this is a, the case in simple geometrical stimuli. Hayden Wilkins measured both metabolism and discomfort from color gratings made of two colors with different separations in chromaticity computed in the sea leaf perceptual color space. Over a large gamut of chromaticities, Increasing chromaticity differences were consistently associated with increasing hemodynamic responses and increase in reported discomfort. So we built a metric using the association between separation in chromaticity in the seal of space and cortical responses. For each pixel in an image, we computed the chromaticity in the seal of space and next computed the Euclidean distances between all the neighboring pixels and the reference pixels in the silo space. So finally, we have reduced all these distances to get a single number for each pixel. 
widely separated pixels in a chromatic space are associated with high values coded in yellow here in the image, and chromatically uniform areas correspond to low values coded in blue here. So this heat map here on the left gives the metric for each pixel. Averaging across the whole image gives a single number. As an average of average distances in the chromaticity space, the metric can be considered as a global distance in the silic space. So to recap, the metric is based on first principle. It exploits the finding that the cortical response to color arrangement correlates with separations in the chromaticity space. And importantly, the metric to compute average chromaticity difference is parameter free. We did not fit any parameter before contrasting it with self-reported visual discomfort. So to test the metric, we define a first experiment that can be summarized in a single sentence. Contrast self-reported visual discomfort from an image and the image average separation in chromaticity. So we simply asked observers to rate images of abstract art to rate them for discomfort on a Likert scale. And we contrasted the ratings to average separation in chromaticity. <clears throat> so we found that uh, this metric that average local separation in chromaticity provides a good predictor of visual discomfort. And the metric accounts for variance in judgment of discomfort over that previously explained using the profile of luminance and deviation with respect to one of the one of a spectrum of natural images. So to better control for edge contrast energy, a possible computing, confusing factor for the metric, we define a stimuli that varies in average chromaticity difference, but not in edge contrast energy. Using rotations and pseudo rotation in the silo space, we define a triples of images made of a three level of uh, the metric, a low, medium, and high level, but the same level of edge contrast energy. Using the same experimental procedure as for the preceding experiment, analyzing the data using observer identity and identity of stimuli triples as random factors, we found that increasing values of the metric were associated with increased values of visual discomfort. So that's confirmed the previous result with more control on luminance contrast energy. So, we have an association between chromaticity difference and visual discomfort. But the question is whether this relationship can be framed in terms of the statistic of natural scenes, as it is the case for luminance. To answer this question, we computed the average chromaticity difference for two sets of calibrated natural images. We found that 97% of the distribution, so the distribution here for natural images is represented in green. So 97% of the distribution were below a value of the metric of 0 0.01, a value not associated with visual discomfort in our experiment. We also found that distance to the distribution was a good predictor of visual discomfort. Finally, we found that the only images that approached the value of the color metric uh, of uncomfortable images were stimuli thought to have played a central role in the evolution of primate trichromacy, namely ripe fruits against green, a green foliage. So this study may provide a new perspective on how to understand visual discomfort. So let's consider the gigantic space of all possible images. A big subset of them is processed without any problem by the visual system. Natural images make a tiny subset within this set. So this inclusion is in conformity with a theory of efficient coding. Now, our stimuli in this experiment straddle the border between comfortable and uncomfortable stimuli. The uncomfortable color stimuli are somehow exaggerated version of fruit against foliage. In the same way, the typical examples of uncomfortable and epileptogenic stimulus stripes may work as a super control that overloads a visual system made for detecting cultures in natural environments. So this list, this list to the testable hypothesis. Is that generally the case that visual discomfort arises when adaptive perceptual mechanisms are overstimulated by specific classes of stimuli rarely found in nature? But that brings me to the conclusion. So 
we have seen that some arrangement of color cause visual discomfort. A principal measure of chromaticity difference with no fitted parameters accounts for a substantial variance, uh, amount of variance in judgment of discomfort. Chromaticity differences that cause discomfort are not found in nature, but ripe fruits against foliage have especially high values for the metric. And that brings a new perspective on visual discomfort with a the stable hypothesis that visual discomfort arises when adaptive perceptual mechanisms are overstimulated by specific classes of stimuli never found in nature. So I would like to thank uh, Sarhait and uh, Arnold Wilkins for all the work uh, on this project made together. And I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much.